Hello, writers. I'm Rhonda Dean Kinsel, and I'm the Associate Dean for Students at the University of Oklahoma, where I oversee academic advising and student engagement for the College of Arts and Sciences on our campus. I also have a PhD and a master's degree from OU in composition, rhetoric, and literacy. Most of my academic life has been focused on writing. I taught first year composition on our campus for the entirety of my degrees from fall 2000 until spring 2009. And I returned to the classroom after I became associate dean and have taught composition classes online and in traditional settings. I've also recently taught our writing for the, the medical professions course. My other role at OU in the writing world was as assistant director of the OU Writing Center. And it was there that I first encountered writing groups and witnessed their power really firsthand. I worked in the OU Writing Center from 2006 to 2009 while I was writing my doctoral dissertation. And actually, I'll be serving again as the interim director of the Writing Center in the coming academic year. By the way, it's quite likely that your institution has a writing center too, and I don't know if you've ever been there or if you've ever made contact with anyone there, but if you haven't, you really should. But anyway, back to my experiences with writing. As I worked on my dissertation and the research for it, I was a member of what we called a dissertation support group. We met once a week for the entire academic year, every Friday morning. There were five of us in the group, and all of us were working either on our dissertations or on theses for our graduate degrees. I was able to begin my dissertation in August of 2008, and I actually finished and defended it in the following May 2009. And I know that that significant progress was due to my writing group. They shared the same issues and struggles that I did. Uh, they held me accountable for my work every week. They gave me fantastic feedback on all of the multiple drafts I had to write, and they just encouraged me, you know, when I, when I would become discouraged. And I did the same for each of them. So in this session, we're going to talk about five things. The need for writing groups, the advantages of writing groups, the structure that we're using for Nakata's groups, what writing groups are not, and a bit about the design and structure of successful writing groups. So let's start uh, just with the basics on, on why you need a writing group. One of the main reasons for writing in groups is to combat this myth of genius. Now this is the idea that really good writers sit in attic rooms and just bring forth page after page of perfect content on any given day they choose. And if you believe in this myth, but then you struggle to come up with an idea or to write a coherent page of content, you get really frustrated and eventually you may even stop writing. Well, one of the things I learned during my dissertation writing also impacts the need for writing groups, and that's the isolation that you can experience as a writer. I found myself sitting at home facing that blinking cursor on the screen or that white page of text and just struggling to begin. I just felt super alone. I felt like I didn't know enough. I felt unprepared to write such a large document. I was just overwhelmed. But all of these struggles and challenges were addressed when I joined a writing group. So what are the advantages of writing groups? First of all, the writing group gave me a community where I could simply talk about, you know, what I was experiencing. I quickly discovered I wasn't the only person who felt isolated. The other members of my group had felt exactly the same way. They were staring at blank screens too. So we immediately had something in common and a connection. During our first meeting, we each shared, you know, a little bit about uh, what our research was about and our experiences. We shared some of our personal details about who we were and where we were on our academic journeys. And finally, we discussed how we would organize ourselves, how often we would meet, uh, how often we would present our writing, 
how we would provide feedback to one another and what we all expected to gain from the group. Now in Nakata, as we organize uh, this year's writing support groups, we'll follow a similar trajectory to last year's. As you know, we've organized the groups based on general categories, according uh, to where you may be in your own writing process. So the first group uh, is the idea generation group. This is a group for those of you who want to form and articulate an idea for a written submission, either to a journal or a presentation that you might want to give at a conference. You're very early in the writing process. In fact, you may consider yourself a complete novice, like with no idea what you may want to write about or present on. But you know, you've just got this general idea that you want to be involved in and you want to experience this. We'll actually begin this group by reviewing some articles and journal submissions just to give you some basic ideas uh, about how the genre works and, and what a submission looks like. We'll ask you though, after you've read and reviewed three journal articles, to propose your own idea. An idea that kind of marries your work with something uh, you find that resonates with you. So that's kind of the general idea of idea uh, generation. The second group is the idea development group. And in this group, we expect that you already have an idea, but you're in the very early stages of developing it. You're outlining it maybe, you're mulling this idea over, figuring out how you might turn this idea into a submission to a journal or a conference. In this group, you'll begin by sharing your idea outlines with one another. You'll give and receive feedback from your colleagues in the group, and we hope that by the end of the academic year, you'll have a rough draft you're ready to work on. Which brings us then to the third group, which is the drafting and revising group. The members of this group will already have rough drafts right at the beginning, um, and you'll already be ready to share those, those rough drafts with members of your group, with your colleagues. Based on the feedback you receive from your group, we hope that by the end of the year, you'll have a more polished draft that you're ready to submit actually to a journal or to a conference as a presentation. Finally, we've got a fourth group of writers uh, who've requested one-on-one -on -one consultations. And this group will work closely with our final group of participants, our writing mentors. Now the writers in the one-on-one -on -one group may have a unique situation or a writing scenario that really doesn't allow them to be a member of one of these other groups. We'll pair you with one of our writing mentors, but, but remember that this is not meant to be an ongoing pairing. You just join one of the writing groups for a more long-term journey, all right? So now to my, my favorite part, which is talking about what writing groups are not, okay? Before we get into the details of how our writing groups will function, I wanna say a word about, about what they're not or how you can ensure a writing group will fail. <laughs> First of all, if you wanna ensure that a writing group fails, you can be the resident expert. The members of writing groups are not usually writing instructors or teachers. Now you could be, but in most situations, they are not. We expect that everyone in the group is a professional and already has the ability to communicate effectively. It's fine to come to the group with a question about grammar or style, but we really encourage the group to look up the answers to those kinds of questions using an online style guide or an online writing lab. I always uh, give credit to Purdue University. They have got a fantastic online writing lab that is available to everyone. So please don't set yourself up as a writing instructor or as a grammar checker <laughs> for your group. The point, of, the point of writing groups is not to correct grammar, right? It's to provide feedback, encouragement, and accountability for everyone in the group. Setting yourself up as the expert can also trample on the voices and work of others in your group. When you become so heavy handed with your review of another writer's work that you are marking through their words or crossing out paragraphs, you've taken over that work and you've really made it your own. 
that's not the purpose of these groups. Our goal is for each writer to feel empowered and enabled to bring their own ideas into the open and write about their experiences in their own voices. And a heavy-handed critique can essentially victimize that writer. Certainly, you should ask questions of the writer if there are portions of their work you don't understand. And you should offer your perspective on what the writer has written. And exp you know, express yourself truthfully when you lose track of the main idea or the thread. But please, please stop short of making another writer's work sound like yours. Uh, and if you want to read more about our philosophy of writing, of writing groups, you can certainly do that by reading the statement on the website. The other important thing to remember here is that most of us can figure out the grammar issues after we've completed a draft. In the early stages of idea generation, development, drafting, we want you to focus on the big ideas, the thesis, how the article connects ideas from one to another, whether or not the thesis speaks to resonant issues in academic advising, if the reader can follow the writer's train of thought, those kinds of big picture ideas. If you focus on grammar early, you'll invariably create a situation for yourself or the writer that stymies creativity. We have a saying here at OU uh, in our freshman orientation camps where we ask students to drop their cool. And it would be a good idea for you to follow that guideline in these groups. This is not the place to show off, right? Uh, secondly, another way to make a writing group fail is not to do the work you say you'll do. Uh, if you want to ensure that this group doesn't work, don't meet your obligations or uphold your responsibilities. Show up on time, review the writing or reading that you've been given, given <laughs> present your own work to the group, just do what you say you'll do, all right? A third way to make sure a writing group fails is to spend the entire session socializing. And of course, as I said at the beginning, some socializing, some socializing will certainly occur, and it's great to share some of your uh, personal experiences and things like that, particularly at the beginning or end of a meeting. But remember the point is to focus on your writing and the preparation of your writing for publication and sharing with a wider audience. So don't spend the entire hour just chatting. If you find you really hit it off with certain members of the group, arrange another time to socialize outside the time that you're meeting as a writing group. Fourth, another way to make a group fail is to latch on to someone else's ideas and present them as your own. Certainly, writing groups are places to find collaborators, but if you want to collaborate with someone, reach out to them outside of the group and discuss that possibility with them there. Then decide together if that collaboration will move forward or not. Okay, so enough about uh, how to uh, not work in your writing group. Let's move on now to how the writing groups will work. First, I'll email all of you early in September with the names of your group members and their contact information. I will basically put the groups together. Now, there will be more than one group in each of our categories, so we'll likely have several members sign up under each one of those categories. And I'll divide those into smaller groups of six or seven members. So in early fall, look for an email from me with your particular uh, group members. Secondly, in that email, I'll not only provide you with your group members and their contact information, I'll also provide you with a Zoom link for your first meeting. Now, some of you have already volunteered to be a casual coordinator for your group, but we'll need one of those in every single one of the groups. I wanted you to know that this doesn't uh, mean that you're signing up as a casual coordinator to read all the papers or to be uh, the genius. Remember, we don't believe in that. <laughs> the casual coordinator is just a person who'll step out during that first meeting uh, and say, hey, let's introduce ourselves. And then after 10 minutes or so of chatting, the casual coordinator will say, okay, let's move on to our discussion of our ideas or of our work. 
Most importantly, during that first meeting, you'll need to do what I talked about earlier in the webinar with my dissertation support group. You'll need to establish your parameters and your guidelines as a group. In this discussion, and I'll send you these questions in the email I send you about your group, you'll need to decide how often you'll meet, when you will meet, who will be the first to submit an idea or a paper, how will we give feedback. You really just need to design your group in that first meeting. In our academic life coaching, uh, we call it designing the alliance, <laughs> right? So in that first meeting, you just need to decide how you're going to work together. So let's get through these questions in a little more detail um, about how this is gonna work. So in your first meeting, let's, let's talk a little bit more about that. First, you'll wanna decide when and how often you'll meet and how long each meeting will be. This is, you know, really basic stuff. Keep in mind that some of you may be in different time zones. I'll do my best to put you in a group where you're in the same time zone, but you may need to adjust based on that. We recommend that you meet at least every few weeks uh, for 60 to 90 minutes. And if you think about academic semesters or quarters, you certainly want to meet often enough to make significant progress during each three or three and a half month period. All right. But as a group, you can decide on that. Secondly, you'll need to decide how you'll communicate between meetings. Will you email one another? Uh, will you communicate via cell phone or office phones? Just talk about your preferred methods of communication as a group. Third, who will submit their work first? Kind of a basic point, but a very important one. Who will be prepared to share during that first, second, third meetings? Fourth, when will the work be submitted to the group in order to provide plenty of time for everyone to review it before the next meeting? Um, you know, you need to decide as a group, do we need 10 days? Do we need two weeks to read this? Make plans now for, for how you'll accommodate that. We recommend you submit work, you know, if, whether it's your outline or a draft, at least 10 days to two weeks before the meeting time so everyone has plenty of opportunity to review your submission. Fifth, you want to decide what you'll do during the meeting. Now, we'll provide a set of questions for reviewing outlines or writing, but if you want to provide additional feedback or use different questions, the group is absolutely free to decide that. Sixth, uh, you want to decide what kind of feedback your members are interested in. Do they want to receive feedback via email? Uh, do you just want the other group members to give you that feedback orally during the meeting? How would you like to receive and provide feedback? And seventh, and this is so incredibly important, what would you like to get out of this writing group? Discuss in your first meeting what your members' expectations are and what their goals are. This is essential because um, I'm sure you've heard the saying, right? If you aim at nothing, you surely will hit it. So decide in that early meeting uh, what your expectations are so that you're sure that the group meets the needs of the members. In your subsequent meetings, the casual coordinator can keep, you know, keep track of dates and times and emailing members with reminders. Be sure to follow the guidelines you agree to during that first meeting. Keep your promises. <laughs> and if you have any questions or bumps along the way, any issues that arise, please, please, please feel free to contact me. Uh, my contact information is on your screen and is on the Nakata website, so please feel free to email. It's also a good idea to review our writing group philosophy statement. Um, I shared a little bit of that core philosophy earlier, but it's a good idea to read the full statement online and be sure to keep those principles in mind as you collaborate with your colleagues. All right, I think I've touched on most of the basics. 
I'm happy to answer your questions and comments via email, as I said, at rkinsel, is how you pronounce my last name, at ou.edu. And please continue to check our webpage for more information and resources. Just a reminder to be sure to be logged in as an ACADA member to see all of the content available to you. So good luck with your writing. We need your voice. We need your contribution to the scholarship of academic advising.